What I see in the faces of the patients, fear. Fear of the unknown. Right beside them, friends die. It's so, so frightening. Is this how I'm going to end up to? My job is to help them to see amidst Ebola, there's still hope. Every morning, we sing to build up our hopes. Then, get prepared. The boy was a I'm a nurse. I'm a mental health clinician, and I work here as psychosocial officer and a nurse. When I go in, I'm like an aunt to them inside. Most of them refer to me as big sister. Radio Bongo FM 96.5 You are It's within my spirit to give care Though we're not touching or so But there are other things that we can do Like build their hope Make them to feel more confident That they can come in here and walk out You have to get one bottle of clear water At the moment we, we are discharging We have one patient uh, Test proof negative and so we had to discharge her out. I'm going, 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 I'm going, 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 going. What gives me the most, most hope? People come in here so frustrated and sick. And after they walk out of here. It makes me feel that I'm working, that I'm able to do something. It makes me happy, it makes me feel fulfilled. <laughs> when you look at the, the blue buildings and, and the PPE spacesuits, this is a little otherworldly. There are tons of sad stories, um, but there's also a lot of cured patients. Statistically, that's fewer than, than don't make it. But when it happens, it's just a thrill. When I saw the news of the outbreak occurring, it wasn't really so much. Um, whether I would go, it was how and in what capacity. That's good, actually. I think that's good. There's a dramatic need for medical practitioners. I'm acting as a volunteer. This is a medical public health emergency. You know, then there's a worthy role. The actual work is physically challenging. You have limited hearing because your ears are covered. You have li limited vision because the goggles get foggy. And if you can work in a sauna for an hour, not sit in a sauna, if you can work in a sauna, then you pass that litmus test. This was, this was forested jungle land. They cut a road in here, said this is your hilltop. On our campus, you're going to have supply areas, work rooms, locker rooms. The washers and dryers are almost going constantly. A suspected ward, a confirmed ward. There's a huge plumbing infrastructure underneath this that had to be built from scratch. And it came from a couple weeks of work and sprung from the ground. All of us, all of the caregivers are making direct differences. It's a developing playbook. And there were some rules from prior outbreaks, but this one is much bigger and much more urban. We, as caregivers, we can get so much more done. The number of persons that die, we can't forget them. We won't forget about Ebola. I'm working at a great digger. 
I'm not a dieter, neither a next. My own skill I have, I'm a laborer, daily hire. Instead of missing any day for nothing, I decided to join the process to fight against Ebola. The work here is not easy, though. Our brothers and sisters, they are all dying day yeah. and night, every day. By the way, I brought the baby here when the baby died. Four days old baby. So that they can bury the baby close by her mother. No mercies of Ebola. I have a family. I have two children. When my children grow up, they will see it in magazines, in books, and they will see some pictures about Ebola. They will know, oh, that was diet. I think we were fighting through the process during the times of Ebola. It should be proud. Ebola is affecting the world seriously. If I go and sit aside and just be looking at it, you know what Ebola will do? It will damage so many people in this world. So when I'm working here, I have no safe the world.